Got it. That makes sense. So how do you um, coach entrepreneurs that are at that level? And there are a lot of them that are at that level that can afford to take somebody on to lessen the burden in whatever mechanism uh, you describe. How do you, you know, kind of get them over the hump to, because uh, I, I see a lot of entrepreneurs when um, they bring somebody on, they're scared and they're scared mm -hmm. of them not doing the job that you were doing before right. because they don't have, like you said, you don't want to give out equity. They don't have equity. They're not going to focus on what, you know, should be done 150% like you are. Um, how do you kind of coach entrepreneurs to get over that, that fear and that bump in the road to it's okay to delegate because mm -hmm. if you get, that's the only way to grow in my opinion. It is. So the first step is, do you want to grow? I mean, where do you really want to be? So you got to make up your mind. Who are you? How are you wired? And is this in your DNA? Because some people just can't let go of control and can never, they just can't do it. So you got to decide first and foremost, can I, am I willing to do that? Uh, and really what that means is number one, understanding nobody's going to do it exactly like you. Everybody's got sort of their own thing. Nobody's going to deliver the results exactly like you, but people will perform and they will deliver uh, and they will do a good job, but it's never going to be exactly like you would do it at certain levels. You know, then there will be levels, you know, where I was very fortunate. I came in, you know, so let me back up a bit. Really what you want to do is you want to have hire people that are smarter, better, and more talented than you. So a lot of it goes back to ego. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that are threatened by people that are smarter or better than them. And, you know, that's what you should be looking for, number one. You want to, you want to find people that you can learn from that are going to help you, that have been doing what it is you're, you're wanting to do and have been where you're trying to get to and bring them on board to help you build this. So that's number one. Don't be afraid to hire somebody who's way more competent than you, way more smarter and better. That's what you're looking for. So that's one big roadblock. The other one is to realize they're going to make mistakes. They're not going to do things exactly the way you would do it. But as long as they're doing things um, within the guidelines and the culture uh, of the company and, you know, within your values and framework and you get the result you're looking for, it really doesn't matter how exactly they do it as long as they get there. And then that comes back to the leader. So that's where we talked about developing. First thing I do with entrepreneurs is develop them as leaders, leaders, motivators, delegators. So a lot of people just aren't leaders and they don't understand leadership. So leadership first and foremost understands that it all stops with you, right? So normally there's this pyramid, you know, all the executive CEOs up here, everybody else is down below in that organization. So I flipped that pyramid upside down. The leader is at the bottom of that stack. It's the leader's job to give everybody everything they need in that organization, the tools, training, systems, and support to be successful. But the most important thing is that clear direction and no uncertain terms, exactly what's expected and when. And then you measure that performance and you hold them accountable to the goal that was set. So where people fail in organizations and leadership is that they bring people on and they put them in a position and they never give them that clear direction, exactly what they're supposed to do and when, and then measure that performance and provide the feedback, right? Feedback is the breakfast of champions. Okay. You know, your partner was an NFL player, you know, and that, that was the number one role of the coach, not only to train these guys, lead them and motivate them and delegate them, but give that feedback, you know, man, you ran that route, you know, if you'd have just cut right here a little bit sooner, the pass would have been there and boom, you know, and they, they review that film on Monday. Why did they review that film on Monday? Feedback. Feedback is the breakfast of champions, man. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So you got to have that clear direction. You got to have those goal setting sessions. You got to have that feedback to let people know where they stand and then hold them accountable. And what holding accountable means is, you know, hey, we, we needed this underwriting done by Friday. You had the whole week, you know, in order to move forward and make a decision. We didn't get that done. What happened? And then you let them explain. But the direct, the clear direction was laid out. You know, hey, Anthony, I need this deal fully underwritten by Friday so we can decide whether or not we're going to move forward. Um, you know, go get it. So, you know, hopefully they have that system in place of how they do that underwriting, right? Gathering the due diligence, getting all the, you know, information and documents and all that to make the assumptions. So you want to make sure that's a system in place that's already been clearly laid out. So they know exactly what's expected and when. And then when you got to come back in and you got to hold them accountable to that, what happens a lot of times is uh, leaders will delegate a task and they never follow up and follow through. So what that tells your team is what you say is really not that important, right? So whatever you, is important to you will be important to them. You know, you, you've got to make sure that people understand what their contribution means to the company. So when I come in on Friday and you're, and you know, and more importantly, 
a leader inspires results. So you're going to come to me because I'm the kind of leader that's going to reward you at a very personal, intimate level for producing good results. You got to show them what good results look like and you've got to reward good results, right? So you're going to probably come to me Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. Hey, Greg, I got this done, man. Here's the underwriting. Here's what I think. And I'm going to say, Anthony, and that's fantastic. I asked you to have this done by Friday so we could decide whether we are going to move forward with this deal. That's what's going to keep this company growing. That's what's going to make the difference between a great company and just your average company out there, man. You did an awesome job. Thank you so much. I really needed this. And you, you know, and, and you just sincerely appreciate what they've done and let them know what it did for the company. Now, if I have to come to you on Friday afternoon and, hey, Anthony, do you have that underwriting done? Ah, you know, I didn't get that done. I didn't really get a chance. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to say, why not? And then I'm going to hear your reasoning, whatever that is. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm really disappointed. In order for this company to grow, in order for you to grow, in order for you to get to the next level, for us to be a great company, you know, if we have deadlines, we have got to hit them. We have to do whatever it takes, morally, legally, and ethically within our limits, and get this stuff done. This is going to really hold us back. We're not going to be able to reach our goal. Now we have to table this till Monday. It's really going to set us back. You know, so same thing. Now that's a one-on-one -on -one private conversation with nobody else around. Uh, whereas the other one you want to do in front of everybody else. Okay, you reward good performance in front of everybody, redirect poor performance alone. And then at the end of that conversation, you say, you know, Anthony, I know that you want to do a great job. I know that you're doing your best. So whatever it was that tripped you up, let's figure out how we can fix that so this doesn't happen again. And then now you're, you know that it's not personal. Okay, there might have been a glitch in the system. And the first thing you look at, if you didn't get that done, why? Did I not give you everything you needed to get that done? Did you have the tools, training systems, and support to be successful with that, with that outcome? And did I give you the clear direction? Was everything there that you needed? So I got to look at that first and foremost. So if I'm not getting the result I'm looking for, then I need to go take a look at why that happened and then address that. And if they did have everything and they just didn't get it done, then you've got to analyze the individual because you'll have a won't do or you'll have a can't do. That's really the only two things you're going to end up with. And if you have a won't do, there's nothing you can do with that. All right. You should have never hired them in the first place. You just got to get rid of them or they're in the wrong position. Maybe they're not the right. They're not analysts. Maybe they're great at acquisitions or, or you know, investor relations, or maybe they're great at, you know, dealing with brokers or whatever, but they're not analysts. They're not underwriters. So you might have the wrong person in the wrong job. So first and foremost, you got to make sure you hire the right people, put them in the right position so that they can thrive. Aces in places. You want your best people in the best place. If Tom Brady's, you know, on your team in Tampa Bay just hired Tom Brady, they're not going to put him at wide receiver. What are they going to do? They're going to put him at quarterback. And more importantly, what are they going to do? You know how to win Super Bowls. Go win a Super Bowl. You think they're going to micromanage Tom and tell him, dude, you should only take two steps before you pass. Uh -uh. They're going to say, dude, win a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of in a nutshell how that works. That's right. And he, so you touched on a lot of things. Um, the, the one key point that kind of stuck out to me was positive feedback and negative feedback, sort of negative feedback. Um, yeah. But at, in a diff, the way you framed the conversation with the potential employee, I mean, it was, that was perfect. How do you, for a lot of entrepreneurs, including myself, are thinking, how do you keep that person? Is that the way to keep that person motivated to help grow the company alongside you along the way? If, yeah, if so they you, do, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so you have to be sincerely interested in other people first. So you have to be sincerely interested in their success first and foremost. And it's always about, so the result's always about the behavior, not the individual. But, you know, people who feel good about themselves are going to produce the best results. So you have to, you have to, you know, make them a part of the team, let them know how valuable they are. You have to recognize that on a regular behavior. And that really changes to where you want to recognize good performance in public regularly to where it becomes an automatic habit, not in a manipulative way, but a very sincere way and at the smallest levels and let them solve their own problems. That's really it. So, the last thing you want is somebody coming in your office or, you know, hit you up all the time for every little thing. What you want to do is you want to encourage them to solve their own problems by asking them questions. So that way they feel like they're part of the team. They feel like they can do their job. They can thrive. They can make decisions and, and get to that. So, yeah, that, that's a great point. It's first and foremost about making them feel good about themselves, what they do, and the contribution that they're making with the company. The worst thing in the world, you can pay people as much money as you want, but if they don't feel appreciated, sincerely appreciated, 
and fully understand the impact that their actions have on the company in a positive and negative way, it doesn't matter how much you pay. I agree. I agree. I, I have actually experience with that. So yeah. uh, makes makes a lot of sense. Um, kind of winding down a little bit because that was a lot and a lot in this yeah. episode, which is really good. Um, you know, I guess kind of closing arguments here, you know, where I guess if someone's just trying to start a business, let's say it is mm -hmm. on the real estate sponsor side, I guess, like you said, we're, they start with the vision, mission, et cetera. Um, you know, do you still recommend that they do all the work? And obviously you got to get, you got to get revenue. So mm -hmm. or, until how, however long it takes to take on that next hire and to kind of, like you said, you know, grow along, you know, grow alongside them. Is, is that what you would recommend for a new, a new, like a brand new startup, you know, company it, it, specifically in the real estate sponsorship? Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on what your resources are. So yeah, you have to start from where you are. So you don't want to let this, you know, stop. so man, I can't do this unless I have all these pieces. No, just get started. Just get it going and do whatever you have to do to get this thing running, to get it going and then find ways and change the mindset from, you know, a lot of people have the mindset, man, I can't afford that, you know, in my business, in my life, you know, I can't afford that. I can't do this. What you want to do is reframe that conversation. How can I afford it? How can I do this? So what do I need to do in my business, in my life, in order for this to happen and to bring somebody on to help us go? But yeah, ultimately to grow, you've got to get to a point where you take that leap, bring that individual on, but you got to have the revenues, right? So you want to, you've got to build the company to a point where you've got some kind of revenue and or resources to pay that individual, you know, to go ahead and bring them on. Makes a lot of sense. Awesome. And winding down this podcast, uh, we usually ask three questions at the end of each show. Uh, first question would be, we mentioned a couple of books. What would be your favorite, you know, business book or leadership or, you know, even real estate book that you've read in your lifetime? You know, one of the, one of the, best business books I've ever read was Managing by Harold Janine. That's a very old book. Harold Janine was the uh, CEO of ITT, which, um, uh, or yeah, it was ITT, I can't remember now, but uh, multi-conglomerate um, corporation. And uh, back in the you know, 70s, 80s, and built that company into a huge multi-conglomerate, owned all kinds of stuff. Outstanding book about leading, delegating, motivating, holding meetings, growing a, uh, a multi-divisional company. So that, that was a fantastic book. And then, you know, I love reading books about people who have achieved great things. So, you know, the, the you know, Tillman Fertitta's, Marcus Limonis, um, you know, Donald Trump's books, um, uh, you know, Ray Dalio, you know, billionaires who have achieved, you know, a lot of success and even people at the hundreds of millions of dollar levels. I love to read their story, how they built their companies, what they did, the risks they took, things like that. Awesome. And outside of all of this, what are some of your hobbies? Yeah, I've been a lifelong surfer. You know, a lot of people look at me, you're a surfer. So yeah, I've been surfing my entire life and, um, you know, grew up doing that. I love fishing um, and I love skiing. Awesome. And uh, if you had a number one role model, whether it's personally or professionally, who would it be or multiple? Yeah, yeah. So I have a strong faith. So obviously, you know, uh, my faith's important to me. So, you know, from a biblical standpoint, uh, you have all of those, you know, Proverbs is probably the best business book ever written. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, role models and uh, who I look up to, you know, there's, there's so many great leaders in business you can look back on, like Harold Janine was one of them. Uh, you know, Lee Iacocca is another one, you know, in terms of, of business. Steve Jobs, you know, not as a person, but what he's done. You know, Bill Gates, you know, especially right now with, with what he's doing, what he's done, Warren Buffett. So, you know, all of the great business people, um, you know, over the years, but I'll go back to where it all started for me. You know, I read, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. What I got from that book was build businesses that generate cash flow to then invest in other assets. A lot of people get real estate. I didn't get real estate out of that. I got the other way around. So that was first. Then it was um, The Power of Positive Thinking by uh, Norman Vincent Peale. And I applied what I learned. I read that book and I said, I am going to buy in, embrace my faith and believe this and go and believe in myself. You know, the whole premises of that book is nothing can stop somebody who believes, right? So everything is possible for, for he who believes. That's what that book is built on. And then um, uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. So those were the three most fundamental books that I read that launched my career. 
um, and, and, you know, as people to look up to. That is awesome. Um, we'll have all those lists of books and everything Greg mentioned in the comments of the, the podcast. How can people find you, Greg? Oh, so uh, gregdickerson.com, uh, my website. So I've got a YouTube channel podcast where I share content and advice and information. Uh, it's all on there, gregdickerson.com. And, uh, you know, check it out. A lot of great stuff. Awesome. We'll definitely have that in the comments as well. Uh, thank you so much again, Greg, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Again, uh, my name is Anthony Scandariato with Red Knight Properties. I'm your host and hope to see you next time. Thanks again, Greg. Hey, Anthony. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Awesome.